the state appropriation. As you look at this, Dr. Rankin made a comment earlier that there was not an increase in state appropriation. And he is correct. However, this shows uh, a slight difference. What you'll find is that difference was uh, filled in our current year, the 10 11 year, with uh, ARA funds, stimulus funds. Uh, so, really, the, the numbers are the same for each year. It's just a, a way of being shown and how it has to be recorded. Uh, give some grant numbers, you'll see that they're uh, slightly down. Uh, sales and services, other uh, auxiliary, uh, as I've noted in the books, uh, primarily represented the uh, housing and food service uh, is what drives those numbers. Uh, you look at us over time, you see uh, a comparison, you see the increases, flat state appropriation, Slight bump in um, tuition and then auxiliary, and then other remains relatively flat. Uh, if you look at the total amount of our budget for the upcoming year, 35% uh, is state appropriation, state funding. Uh, now, tuition and fees make up almost 46% uh, of our total budget, operating budget. Last year, you can see the state appropriation was 37% of our budget. Back five years ago, it was almost 41 percent compared to 35 percent. Now, uh, I put together a little bar graph uh, just to kind of show you the progression of the time uh, of the budget. And what you find is that as tuition and fees have increased, what's happened to state appropriations have decreased. Ten years ago, as, we, as I stood before this body, or Mr. Giles. Almost 50, 49% of the university's budget came from state appropriation. Okay, that number is now 35%. And people wonder why universities have to have tuition fee increases. This shows you why. It's because of the lack of support of state funding. This, the, this is just raw dollars. This doesn't take into account such things as my economist friend, Dr. Lampkin, would say inflation and things like that. And the purchase Our tuition proposed changes in tuition fees for this year, uh, undergraduate in state from 178 to 186, at 4.49%. Out of state, 4.44%, 4.98 for a graduate student, and an out of state for 4.31 for a gra out of state graduate student. Uh, we again are capping uh, our tuition is 15th hour. So you pay these all hours above the 15th or $100 per, per hour. Uh, we've had two fee increases for the coming year. There's a technology fee of $1 and a $3 facility fee. And I might add that there's also a $5 increase. These are on mandatory fees, but there's also a $5 increase for science uh, laboratory fees uh, to help with the cost of uh, breaking things like that. Uh, the enrollment numbers, uh, this is, I put this in just as a backup to show you some of the increase. It's not all because in the tuition and fee revenue. It's not all because of the 4% uh, increase on the tuition per hour. It's also, if you look at our fall numbers, you see student semester credit hours 43 to 244 for this past fall and 40,000. 333 uh, the time before. So, so the FTE uh, numbers have increased. And we build our budget based on uh, student semester credit hours. Okay. And so you can see why we're partially increasing. Okay. Uh, the total cost of students, uh, you can see where we were. Uh, tuition, 2670. For the current year, it will be 2790. Student fees from 553 to 613, and a total overall increase there of $180 for tuition and fees. Uh, room and board, you can see a $65 increase. And the total cost for a student living on campus has gone up $245, which is 4.45%. Okay. Just a couple of 
couple of notes on some things. Give some grants uh, uh, decreased, as you saw on the previous slide, concerning revenues. Um, we're getting less money from the foundation. Uh, there's been a decline in the market. Uh, giving is down somewhat. And that has taken its toll uh, on this room and board rates increased. Uh, food service contract that we have with outside vendor goes up. This is you're going to see this every year because uh, it's on an inflation-based uh, contract, so it continues to go up. So those operating expenses go up. Salaries, uh, you see an increase here. Uh, this is primarily due to a couple of things. It is a classified pay plan adjustment that was given in January and the release of state funds for a cost of living raise for university employees across campus in December. And that's what's driving that along with, uh, there are I'm trying to think, three new faculty positions in there that were not in the prior year and also uh, promotion for faculty and a few equity adjustments for faculty. Okay. Graduate assistants, we've added a few graduate assistants to meet the demands of the program. Uh, student labor budget, extra health, fringe benefits, a major increase in fringe benefits, and this deals with our health care costs. And I'll talk about that some more in just a moment. Uh, supplies and services, uh, that uh, increase primarily uh, is made up of simply the food service contract. Uh, travel, utilities, some good news, utilities went down. We have more square footage, but utilities is down. And that just goes back to some of the measures that we've taken on campus with district heating, district cooling, a lot of things that have been initiated by Mr. Lewis and his staff working with others, okay? Scholarships, um, relatively unchanged, really 500,000. Uh, but that's uh, primarily a result of how we're having to report Bowie County students. The state makes us, there's been a long standing thing in the state of Arkansas that if a student lives in Bowie County, they come for the in state rate. Okay. However, we now, and we've always just charged them in state reflected in this in state. Well, now the state has changed and wants us to reflect those students as out of state students receiving a Bowie County wage. And so that's uh, primarily the change there. We're not really adding scholarship money, okay? And then debt service went up, and that's uh, the bond issue that we uh, recently uh, approved, uh, the maintenance and service contract. Uh, that's on our uh, heating and cooling with towers, as our custodial, and things like that, okay? Just show a little, <coughs> over time, a little 27 line comparison here. You can see it's just what we discussed. You see the slide increases uh, over time on that one. You see that salaries, fringe benefits, uh, making up almost 50, like 3% of our total budget. Uh, supplies, services, and travel, scholarships at 10.6. Uh, and the utilities and insurance and debt service. Um, look at it last year, it's still about the same numbers. Everything's held pretty much. difference here is that you'll find that supplies and services and travel as a percentage of the total have declined slightly uh, over time and that services increased slightly over time. Okay. You see salaries and how we're, we changed over time and shifted uh, our expenditures. Uh, you see the salaries, you see the fringe benefits, supplies, scholarships, on and on. Touched on this just a minute, uh, a moment ago, concerning salaries and fringes. We have a new faculty position, we have some adjustments, promotions uh, on that. Uh, the 2% cost of living for classified that was given in January, and graduate assistant. Uh, and here's the last item a large increase in health care costs. I touched on this uh, when I stood before you in April uh, concerning the 
financial report, and I stand before you again telling you that we incurred just in this current year a $600,000 increase in health care costs across campus, and it's anticipated to be another $900,000 in the upcoming year. And we're trying to absorb that and we're looking at other options. Uh, I will make you aware that probably Supplies and services was a slight increase, but as I mentioned, it's the food service cost. <coughs> Utilities decreased due to energy saving initiatives, uh, scholarships, and correspond with tuition fees, changing the scholarship waiver policy that I talked about earlier. Okay, and equipment, uh, lab equipment went up with the increase in the uh, lab fees, and that number went up as well. Okay, and this is just the schedule plan. Sometimes it's, it's just difficult uh, to figure out what we do. And we've had a trade-off happen on some of this because as the health cost has gone up, that's really where the salaries are gone. And what's happened over time is that we've kind of fell behind on some of our salary issues on this campus. And I just think the board needs to be aware of our brain where I know we may have shared it with you in the executive session. But that is an issue, and it's an issue as we found out, Dr. Rank can attest, as we went out and searched for two deans uh, this past year, uh, we had to sweep the pot a little bit to bring them in. Uh, but that, as, it, as time goes by and we fall further behind, it's going to be harder and harder to relate, replace people with quality people if our salaries are below the market. So I just need you to be aware of that. Second thing here is health care costs. I mentioned this, and I'm going to beat it to death, but it's a major, major problem uh, for us budgetarily. Staffing needs. It's another issue we have on campus. Is that <coughs> depending on who you ask uh, and where you ask, uh, but overall, if you can make a comparison between SAU and some of the other universities, what you'll find is that we're leaner and leaner on the staff side than any other university in the state of Arkansas. Um, we have met the demands of a lot of our faculty needs. Are we still needing faculty? Of course, there are some holes that we could uh, use. Luckily, we've been able to find some quality adjuncts that have been able to step in and fill the void. But staffing needs. issues. We alleviated a lot of it over time, but they are nothing to the point uh, like they were, but there are still some issues out there, some pockets of some things. Uh, Senator Clinton back there, back to the Senate President for this year, he would tell you that Bob Floor Wilson still needs work. Okay? <laughs> uh, and then, we, of course, we're still facing uh, external pressure. 